Uh, you once quoted, constant repetition carries conviction. Have you always had this attitude to life before MMA? But that's the truth. You, 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 can, you do it enough times, you do it the best. And that's it, the constant, constant repetition carries conviction. It's a true quote and it's, it's worked for me. I've done the same thing over and over and over and over again every single day and I got really damn good at it. Hello. If you don't believe you have what it takes, if you're insecure, feeling inept or powerless, this one is for you. Just keep working on your craft and on your mind every day as you show up and as you talk to yourself, trying to trick yourself. The more you show up, the more real it will all feel. And the funny thing about life is, when you truly feel it, others will feel it too. And when enough people believe in it, even a fairy tale becomes true. If it's a body ripped out of a Marvel comic book, a friendship, a business, YouTube channel, I know it's scary, especially when you first start. But if you want it, and if you want to truly feel it, show up and repeat. Socrates, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Psychology and having the right mindset is one of the fundamental components of the fight game. I'm wondering what your process is before and during a fight to manage your emotions. Thanks. They talk about speed, power, quickness, calmness is an attribute that's many, many times overlooked. I just try and remain calm. Like I said, I was stressed out in my box. I got pulled over by the old bill. I got fucking stuck in a traffic jam. I just tried to remain calm, count to 10, and watch everything open up. That's the same way in a fight, pre, during, and post. Just remain calm. Connor is so incredibly blessed to know such a powerful and universal secret to life. Keeping calm. In a world perpetuating fear and disaster, murder, rape, a world trying to keep you in fear, to keep you consuming, to understand and be calm is truly such a blessing. And without this, Conor McGregor in no way would ever be the warrior he is today, let alone the contagious personality. Stress, fear, and anxiety in excess inhibit the frontal lobe, impairing a capacity to critically think. Cortical inhibition or frontal lobe shutdown, it is called literally turning off the portion of your brain that solves problems. Calm negates that, and whether it be in the arena, playing computer games, or even talking to that cute girl, calm is universal. It allows you to address life's intricate problems to a higher degree and with more depth. It even helps you punch harder, allowing you to articulate your body more fluidly on top of mitigating muscle tension formed by cortisol thus equating to a more efficient kinetic chain, a well-greased axle opposed to a rusted one churning the gears of your body more effectively into your opponent's face. Power, speed, thus also accentuated by calm. If you aren't born with it, like me, meditate, and this secret will be yours too. What is the path to victory? An honest question. How I've been, do you listening, I've been listening to laughter all my career. Yeah. I've been listening to them laugh my whole career. They've been laughing. What, an Irish man win a, win a Cage Warriors world title? Hell no. You serious? An Irish man? An Irish man win a fight in the UFC? Hell no. Laugh. Laughs all around. An Irish, okay, you gotta win. Now he wants to win a world title? Hell no, he's all talk, he's all hype, he's a joke. Laughter all around at the Joker. Then the Joker goes and wins the world title. Now he wants to win a second world title. More laughter. Listen, I bet, I don't know, mate, the sound of laughter and the sound of doubt motivates me. Why do people laugh at those who dream big? When you share the target you hold in your heart, people don't actually laugh at you. They laugh at themselves. They can never see themselves doing what you want to do. Thus, by proclaiming your dream, for them to accept you could achieve it would imply that you are better than them, which makes them feel small. We think and compare and contrast, and typically we like to feel equal or above the people we know. When someone equal or below rises up, it jeopardizes that compare and contrast perception of status and hurts the fragile ego of that individual. And so, that being said, should you really care about someone's fragile ego to the extent of your own dreams? 
Just because someone else feels small because you chose to think big, should you allow yourself to stay at that level? Hell no. It's the opposite. When you get hate for dreaming big, you should take that as a sign of your own evolution, that you are growing where others choose to stay the same. And so just like Connor, you too should feel motivated because it's a sign from your peers that you're taking the steps you need to take towards your own growth. Hate is the first sign that you are transcending your haters, transcending your environment, and for that reason, you should thank them. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you did, it's good karma. And until next time, peace.